Ryu wins. This is the path of my destiny. You want to see my kung fu? I'll show you. Round one. Fight. is a versatile footsie character who can utilize a variety of incredibly strong pokes and burst movement to control space and challenge your opponent's attempt to approach. With large normals that can hit fast and cancel early, Chun-Li's strong defensive game will make it hard for opponents to approach from either the ground or the air. But even if that's the case, don't be afraid to push in and set up some dangerous kill confirms with their access to a variety of burst damage options. However, as strong as Chun-Li's approach tools are, they are limited, meaning it's quite easy to learn when her player is going on the offensive and react accordingly. Those that know the matchup might end up being a serious challenge for Chun-Li to overcome, but careful planning and stage placement can definitely overcome this weakness if her player knows their stuff. As a Chun-Li player, you will need to stay calm under pressure and play a patient game, baiting out mistakes in the neutral and punishing accordingly with your incredible buttons. Just don't neglect her offensive game, as it'll be very easy to deal pretty substantial damage if you can catch your opponent off guard. Chun-Li stands as a tall humanoid character, her height being the same as Ryu and Ken despite the fact her idol pose is slightly hunched. The most iconic female fighting game character of all time, Chun-Li hails from Street Fighter as the first lady of fighting games. And her title of World's Strongest Woman isn't one you should take lightly, if her immaculate legs were enough of an indication. While characters from her home franchise have been all over the place in terms of viability, Chun-Li has always served as one of her series' most consistent characters, with her incredibly strong playstyle almost always landing her fairly high on the tier list of the game she has appeared in. While many different versions of Chun-Li could be used as an example of her strength, her most iconic appearance is definitely in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, where she serves as the game's dominant top tier and is regarded as one of the strongest Chun-Li iterations ever created. She's also no stranger to crossovers either, as she's second only to Ryu in regards to Street Fighter crossover appearances, although they're usually bundled together due to their abundant popularity. Whether it's fighting superheroes in the Versus series, the cast of KOF and Capcom vs SNK, or just joining up with a squad in Fortnite, Chun-Li has done it all. And before Smash players ask, no, she is not a Shoto. Speaking of Smash, Chun-Li's design here will be mainly playing from two titles while sprinkling in references to a bunch of her appearances throughout the years, with said two titles being Third Strike and Street Fighter 2. While I know Ryu and Ken take more after their Street Fighter 2 designs, Chun-Li's fighting style and stance is far more rugged in said game compared to what she would become later on in the series. And thanks to this, I feel it doesn't represent Chun-Li that well. As a result, her stance and figure are based more on her appearances in Third Strike in the Versus series, which is a more slender design with highly defined legs. Not only is this considered a fan favorite among Street Fighter players, but I mean, come on, who can say no to legs like that? Her basic animations will also mainly pull from her appearance in Third Strike as well, with her walk, crouch, dash, block, and double jump animations referencing the fluid visual style of said title. As a fighter, players of Ryu and Ken will be quick to notice that Chun-Li will share a lot of their basic traits, including but not limited to her always facing her opponent in one-on-one -on -one fights, her jump arcs always being locked during a forward jump, her access to light and heavy inputs for all of her grounded normals, and ability to link her normal buttons into her special attacks. However, one change players will immediately notice is to have Chun-Li's hit sounds, for where Ryu and Ken sport Street Fighter 2 hit sounds, <laughs> Chun-Li's hit sounds are, like her design, from Third Strike. This will make it all the more satisfying to land those parries mid-match, but don't be surprised if everybody tries to get their own Evo Moment 37 against you. While smaller aspects like this can definitely help Chun stand out, there's a few aspects of her character that are unlike anything sported by her fellow Street Fighters. These are going to take a bit of time to explain, however, so let's move on to discussing said aspects and her character mechanic. In terms of mobility options, Chun-Li has two jumps, along with the ability to wall jump. While aspects such as instant turnaround, special cancelling, and light heavy inputs are something many would expect from Chun-Li if she were to join the battle in Smash, there's a couple of extra abilities she brings to the table that will help her stand out from her Street Fighter 2 themed counterparts. These abilities are EX inputs and her trademark lightning legs, and these make up the basis for Chun-Li's character mechanic. 
Starting with EX inputs, this will have Chun-Li take the enhanced specials aspect of Ryu and Ken and push it in its own unique direction. As unlike the aforementioned characters, the inputs for Chun-Li's special moves are notably different and overlap in multiple areas. This is mainly thanks to the fact that Chun-Li is a charge character, which means that in order to perform said attack, you need to hold the control stick in one direction before flicking it in the opposite direction and pressing an attack button. On top of that, Chun-Li's attack inputs have changed quite a bit since her original appearance in Street Fighter 2, and while she has become less of a charge character over the years, it's next to impossible to make a specials kit that can work on one button and have it remain faithful to its original appearance. As a result, Chun-Li will not be able to perform enhanced specials by performing the move's original input, but instead, will be able to perform EX versions of a couple of her specials by using the move's original input. And for those curious as to what the difference is, EX specials are versions of an attack that will have their properties change in exchange for meter. And since there's no meter in Smash, you can essentially consider these powerful but slower alternatives to her original specials. Also, just to clarify on a previous point, not all of Chun-Li's special moves have EX variations, with only two of her specials having access to this unique ability, and both of them correlate to charge inputs. If you hold back or down back on the control stick, then push forward and press either A or B, Chun-Li will perform EX Kikoken, while holding down then pushing up with either A or B will have Chun-Li perform EX Spinning Bird Kick. This actually references two different Street Fighter titles, as Kikoken was a charge input in Street Fighter 2, while Spinning Bird Kick's input of Down Up Special is a reference to Third Strike. More about these EX specials will be explained in a bit, but for now, let's talk about Chun-Li's other major aspect as a character, her Lightning Legs. Lightning Legs, or Hyakurikskyak as it's officially called, is by far Chun-Li's most iconic attack, with this having her unleash a barrage of blazing fast kicks to wreck up damage on anyone who gets too close. While this attack has seen some revamps in more recent iterations of Street Fighter, here in Smash it will be following its classic design, with the player having to repeatedly mash either the A or B buttons in order to perform the move. These long-reaching kicks are completely disjointed and will push Chun-Li's hurtbox backwards while the move is active, making it very difficult to challenge from melee range unless your opponent sports a long-range disjoint of their own. And when you combine this with the fact that it's a fairly fast move that can be comboed into from irregular normals, you have one of the scariest neutral tools in the entire game. Its strengths don't stop there either, as the automatic turnaround effects of Smash and the ability to use this move in the air combine to make a move your opponent will always need to be prepared for. Of course, a move like this is not without its downsides, and one of its biggest flaws is its inability to launch opponents. You're going to be mainly using Lightning Legs as a punish tool against opponents getting up off the ledge or to whip punish attacks in the neutral, and while it can definitely deal some solid damage in little time, you're never going to secure a kill with this attack thanks to its knockback properties. It's also not a move that can combo into itself, meaning you can't start a Lightning Legs, stop, reposition, and start a new one and expect your opponent to not either break out of your attack or to immediately punish you. Finally, this move cannot link into any of Chun-Li's other specials, meaning that its use as a combo bridge is fairly weak overall. As Chun-Li is a character who's designed to be more defensive than offensive, it's no surprise that her signature attack would be an incredibly powerful defensive option, and while her opponents can punish her by either using projectiles, long disjoints, or jumping over and hitting her from behind, none of these counters are 100% effective if the Chun-Li player knows how to move and space her opponent effectively. Essentially what I'm saying is that, despite what some might think, this is not a beginner-friendly tool, and using Lightning Legs effectively is one of the biggest aspects of the character that will separate the Bronze ranks from the Diamond ranks. This move is also removed from Chun-Li's other specials, essentially granting her 5 specials on par with Terry, and Ryu if you want to consider Shakunetsu Hadouken its own attack. While both of these mechanics seem quite small on paper, especially compared to a lot of the aspects she has in common with the other Street Fighter characters, their impact on Chun-Li's game plan is immense, and definitely will be moves you're going to want to use fairly often if you want to play the character optimally. While you now have an idea of how Chun-Li's playstyle is designed to work, let's now move on to the attacks that can jumpstart pressure or be the bane of your opponent's attempts to approach. Let's talk about Chun-Li's normals. <laughs> Chun-Li's normals will make reference to her various attack buttons and throughout the Street Fighter series, with these attacks blending together aspects from Street Fighter 2, Third Strike, and Street Fighter 5 to create a Chun-Li that truly feels like an embodiment of all her greatest features. And I'm not just talking about those thighs. Also, like Ryu and Ken, Chun-Li's grounded normals are split between light and heavy variations with the version you get being dependent on whether or not you tap or hold the attack button as you input the attack. Starting with her neutral combo, Chun-Li will make use of a 3-hit combo string consisting of her standing light punch from Street Fighter V, her far standing light kick from Street Fighter II, and finishing it off with Yoko Senkyak, a command normal from both Street Fighter III and V. The extra two hits allow Chun-Li to challenge whiff punishes and deal some decent damage in the process, but chances are high that you're only going to be using this combo either thanks to a misinput or as a means of catching your opponent off guard. This is thanks to the fact that it is by far the weakest of Chun-Li's close-range options, and doesn't really offer anything that other attacks can't do better. 
aside from the startup of the short range jab. Regardless, it can combo into her specials and lightning legs, so even if you use it by accident, it can still lead to something useful. If the button is held, however, Chun-Li will instead perform a wide-hitting roundhouse kick, referencing her standing roundhouse from both Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 5. While a bit slower than her other grounded attack options, this moves fantastic range and damage making an incredibly dangerous neutral tool that's hard to challenge and even more difficult to whiff punish. And should Chun-Li make contact with her opponent, she can either combo into one of her special moves to deal extra damage or just let it ride, as the kick on its own is powerful enough to confirm kills at decent percents. Mix that with its upward attack angle and the player can use this as a fairly powerful anti-air as well. However, it should be noted that, while this move is quite strong, this is not the only version of this attack that Chun-Li can perform. For if the player performs the same move when an opponent is close by, she will instead perform Hakai, a powerful double palm thrust that will hit fast and deal heavy damage in the process. Much like the close heavy versions of Ryu and Ken's neutral combos, Hakai is designed to be one of Chun-Li's main setup tools, be it for combos or confirming a kill. And with a startling 4 frames of startup, this can be quite difficult to challenge from the front, especially since it can cancel into lightning legs. It also cancels quick enough to block a potential punish, so if you're within this move's range, you're best to either roll or just hold shield, as its shield damage isn't that high. Moving on to her forward tilts, Chun-Li's regular forward tilt will have her perform her standing medium kick from Street Fighter V, this quick strike sporting intangibility on startup and covering a solid range in the process. This can be considered one of your main neutral pokes, and with its speed, range, and ability to cancel into a variety of other attacks, it's a move that does its job fairly well. Just be careful, as opponents at higher percents might pop out of special follow-ups if done from too far away. However, much like Ryu and Ken, Chun-Li also sports a close standing forward tilt, with this coming in the form of her close standing heavy kick from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. While Ryu and Ken's attack is a quick follow-up oriented attack, this knee strike by contrast sports a ton of active frames, granting her a larger cancel window and even the ability to jump cancel. If used correctly, you might even be able to use this move to counter sweeping blows, as instant air lightning legs are a thing you can perform here in Smash. If the button is held, however, Chun-Li's forward tilt will turn into her standing heavy punch from Street Fighter 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and almost every other game where she can perform a heavy attack, honestly. This is regarded as one of Chun-Li's greatest buttons overall, as despite being a punch attack, the range it sports is arguably one of her best. It's no surprise this move's design has remained the same for over 30 years, and here in Smash, it's no different, as this is one of Chun-Li's best neutral buttons and a great way to not only set up some serious damage, but also preemptively punish your opponent's attempts to approach and stuff buttons. Just don't use it too much, as while fast on startup, it's an easy move to punish if your opponent blocks it at close range. Moving on to her up tilts, Chun-Li's regular up tilt will have her perform her standing light kick from Street Fighter V, a very fast high-hitting kick that will knock foes hit by it up into the air. Hitting a grounded foe with this move is one of Chun-Li's best ways to start a combo, and thanks to its range, she can even use this to harass opponents on platforms. But since its main use is to have a combo starter or combo filler, its chances of securing kills are next to non-existent. If the button is held, however, Chun-Li will instead perform her standing medium kick from Third Strike, a wide-hitting strike that will hit just as far in front of her as it will above her. Thanks to its wide arc and decent damage, this is arguably one of Chun-Li's stronger anti-airs, and unlike Third Strike, she can special cancel this move here in Smash, making it even more deadly in the hands of a professional. Moving on to her down tilts, Chun-Li's regular down tilt will have her perform her crouching light kick from Third Strike, a quick long-reaching strike that can be used to check buttons and pressure opponents in the neutral. And like her up tilt, she can use it to open up opponents and set up one of her powerful stock closers. But it's not nearly as rapid fire as Ryu or Ken's down tilts. As a result, pressuring your opponent in their shield isn't nearly as reliable, and it's best to only use this when your opponent least expects it. As for the held variation, Chun-Li will perform her crouching medium kick from Third Strike, a very dangerous move that serves as one of Chun-Li's best buttons in the game it comes from. This super fast long-reaching poke option will cover a wide range and recover almost as fast as it comes out, allowing Chun-Li to cancel into just about anything you can think of. This means there's a plethora of options for you and a plethora of reasons for your opponent to be very afraid. Against some characters, however, this move is strong enough to completely shut down their entire neutral game if used properly, so don't be afraid to throw this out if you catch your opponent making a mistake in the neutral. Chun-Li's dash attack is Susei Kyuk, a new attack introduced in Street Fighter V that works as a follow-up to her V-Skill. With this, Chun-Li will perform a leaping straight kick in order to launch foes away, with this move being one of the few attacks that Chun-Li cannot use to link into her specials. It can link into her lightning legs, but the knockback of the initial kick might make it difficult to use the move as a combo bridge unless your opponent is at very low percent values. Regardless, this move can be used as a kill option to higher percents, but is still unsafe on shield. For her getup attacks, Chun-Li will attack around herself with a pair of kick attacks, all while performing a sweeping kick for her ledge attack. 
Like Ryu and Ken before her, Chun-Li's smash attacks will mainly consist of more powerful normals she can perform in the Street Fighter series, along with special moves that might not mesh well with her specials kit and smash. These attacks will hit fast and hit hard, with moves like up and down smash even being special cancelable at lower percents. But throw them out at inopportune times and you'll find yourself being on the receiving end of a nasty bit of broken hubris. Chun-Li's forward smash is Hazanshu, a special move that was introduced in the Street Fighter Alpha series that will have Chun-Li leap forward and perform a powerful flip kick. This slam launching foes with heavy force and providing Chun-Li with a great attack option for challenging pressure and punishing close to mid-range projectile usage, as she is projectile invulnerable during the first 7 startup frames of this move. Thanks to these unique traits and its blend of great range and damage, this is one of Chun-Li's strongest kill confirms in an attack that's just fast enough to catch your opponents off guard in the neutral, which is nice as this is one of the last attacks your opponents will be expecting from you in mid-range. Do be careful with it, however, as whiffing this move will leave you wide open to a counterattack from your opponent. Chun-Li's up smash is Tenku Kyuk, a command normal that has been around since her introduction in Street Fighter 2 that will have Chun-Li perform a high-flying kick, this move thrusting her lower half into the air and covering notably more vertical range than her other anti-air attacks. While fairly standard in terms of damage, this move's main strengths are its speed and ability to safely challenge platforms as Chun-Li's calf counts as a disjoint. On top of that, this move can be cancelled into a variety of attacks at low to mid percents, including but not limited to specials, lightning legs, and even jump cancelling into aerials. However, one aspect of this move that might hold it back from being used in the neutral is its fairly poor horizontal range, making it so Chun-Li's opponent needs to be right next to her in order for the move to work effectively. Even so, it can be a great out of shield option, so if you parry an incoming attack, this can be one of your best ways to start some serious damage. Finally, Chun-Li's down smash is her crouching heavy kick from Street Fighter V, the single side attack that will, a single side attack that will have Chun-Li thrust one of her legs forward in order to knock out her opponent's balance and launch them away. While her long legs cover a sizable range, this move's speed and heavy hit stun make it a very dangerous attack to challenge in the neutral, especially since it's faster than even the pokes of other fighters. Also, if that weren't enough, this move can also be special cancelled or cancelled into lightning legs, which can lead to massive chunks of damage and even kill setups if your opponent is within kill range, but all of this is on an attack that only covers one side of Chun-Li. What this means is that the move lacks Oki potential if you're close enough for your opponent to roll behind you, but thankfully, a well-placed lightning leg can more than make up for this weakness. As she is a fine game character, Chun-Li's aerial mobility is a mixture between just above average and next to non-existent since her forward jump arcs are locked in only one direction. However, Chun-Li's aerial mobility is a bit better than that of Ryu and Ken, which is thanks to the mobility differences between Street Fighter 2 and Third Strike, and to go along with this boost in speed, Chun-Li's aerials are perfectly tailored to complement her neutral heavy playstyle. From stuffing jump-ins to landing safely to even setting up a grounded combo, Chun-Li can do it all and more. Chun-Li's neutral air is her jumping heavy punch from Third Strike, this quick but low range attack having Chun-Li strike in front of herself with a straight punch. This attack, while simple at first glance, is actually one of Chun-Li's trickiest mix-up options, thanks in part to the fact that this attack is only one half of the full move. If the player presses the A button again while the move is active, Chun-Li will immediately follow up this punch with a backhanded strike, turning this attack into a target combo and making this a dangerous 1-2 punch that could potentially secure offstage kills. Thanks in part to its decent knockback and frighteningly fast 2-frame startup, this move also has the potential to cancel into Chun-Li's grounded normals if the player only inputs the first strike, meaning the player can use this to cross up an opponent's shield before going for either a standing heavy punch to reposition opponents or a crouching medium kick to set up a special cancel. And should your opponent block the attack, you can create space or stop potential punishes by cancelling into lightning legs. However, as strong as it can be used effectively, it's still a move that has fairly poor range, meaning that opponents with disjoints and strong spacing tools might make it hard to use in the neutral. Chun-Li's forward air is her jumping medium kick from third strike, this long range kick allowing her to safely challenge jump ends and land fairly well thanks to the disjoint on her foot. This move also serves as one of Chun-Li's best options for cancelling into aerial lightning legs or an aerial special, with it actually being one of her best aerial kill setups if she links into a specific special button, but I'll discuss that more when we get to said section. For now, all you need to know is that, while it's not designed to confirm kills, its damage and cancel potential more than make up for said downside. Chun-Li's up air is her jumping light kick from both Third Strike and Street Fighter V, this quick attack having Chun-Li perform a rising kick that will knock foes upward on hit. Thanks to the move's great speed and quick cancel window, this move can link into itself multiple times in a single jump cycle, allowing the player to juggle their opponent before special canceling into big damage. However, one thing that should be noted is that this is one of the few aerials that can't properly cancel into lightning legs. You can cancel into lightning legs from this move, but chances are high your opponent will either pop out of it or avoid the kicks completely. Chun-Li's back air is her jumping heavy kick from Third Strike, this jumping spin kick acting much like the back airs of Ryu and Ken, save for a much wider hitbox. 
in Third Strike, this is regarded as one of Chun Li's strongest buttons, thanks in part to its incredible priority and ability to force her opponents into Oki setups. But here in Smash, it will serve as Chun Li's strongest aerial attack and her primary aerial kill confirm. Also, thanks to the angle of the kick, this move will hit both below and above Chun Li as she attacks, meaning that it's much easier to hit confirm with and much harder to avoid. Finally, Chun Li's down air is a unique attack compared to her other aerial options, with this being her most iconic command normal, Yosokyak. With this, Chun Li will perform an aerial stomp attack that will come up fast and cancel very quickly. And should it make contact with an opponent, it will have unique knockback properties depending on whether or not the opponent is on the ground or in the air. If her opponent is grounded, Chun Li will bounce back up into the air while leaving her opponent in a state of heavy hit stun, allowing the player to either move out of her opponent's range to set up a potential mix up or follow up with another aerial attack, including but not limited to another stomp. After the third stomp, the grounded opponent will be knocked up into the air, which can, in turn, link into other aerials or be cancelled into either an aerial special or lightning legs. If the opponent is in the air when struck, however, the opponent will be bounced up into the air, with the player being able to drag their opponent upwards as they continue to land stomps. On the third hit, the opponent will be put into a tumble state and be left wide open to further damage, which is namely the same type of follow-ups that the player can perform off of a grounded stomp combo, with the main difference being that the aerial version of Yosokyak will drag opponents towards the top of the screen, which can put them in the prime position for an aerial kill confirm, should the player react quickly enough. Of course, all of what I've discussed depends on whether or not you can actually land the initial stomp, as thanks to this move's relatively short range, you're going to be putting yourself at risk if you want to start a stomp combo. The positives do definitely outweigh the negatives, but it's up to you as to whether or not you even want to risk said negatives. <laughs> Chun-Li will grab by reaching forward with one arm, referencing her grab animation from Third Strike, all while performing a knee strike for her pummel. For her throws, Chun-Li will make use of a mixture of her throw options from the Street Fighter series and command normals, with these throws mainly being used to reposition opponents and set up potential damage at lower percents. While your throws aren't a major part of your game plan, they still have the potential to be useful if used when your opponent least expects it. Chun-Li's forward throw is Koshuto, her main throw from the Street Fighter series that will have Chun-Li use her forward momentum to toss her opponent away with one arm, this throw tossing the opponent a decent distance as it takes after its third strike iteration. Overall, this is a strong repositioning tool and a great way to force ledge pressure if you have mid-screen advantage. And if you don't have mid-screen advantage, well, feel free to use this throw to take it back. Chun-Li's up throw is Rising Strike, a unique take on her close standing medium kick from third strike that will hit twice and launch the cut bow up into the air. At lower percents, the player can follow up this attack with either up air loops or a forward air to create space, but at higher percents, you can potentially punish with one of your specials or lightning legs if your opponent air dodges too early. Chun-Li's back throw is Tenshin Shushu, a new throw option she received in Street Fighter V that will have Chun-Li flip over her opponent and strike them in the back of the head, the force of the kick launching them away and dealing decent damage in the process. In terms of launch power, this is Chun-Li's strongest throw option and can actually kill confirm if you're desperate, but chances are high you're going to be using this throw like you would her forward throw more than anything else. Finally, Chun-Li's down throw is Senen Shu, a unique take on one of her command normals from Street Fighter V that will have Chun-Li perform an axe kick. This strikes smashing opponents into the floor and bouncing them up into the air. At lower percents, Chun-Li can catch opponents using moves like a regular up tilt or a target combo neutral air, but at higher percents, the player might be able to catch opponents with their up air out of a full hop if they're lucky. This works more effectively against the game's heavier fighters, and do remember that even the slice aerial hit can link it to either specials or lightning legs. It's now time to talk about Chun-Li specials, and this is where we'll get to talk about the iconic special moves that she's been able to utilize throughout the entirety of the Street Fighter series. This is also where we'll look into her EX specials and just how they work in tandem with the rest of Chun-Li's kit, so there's a lot to talk about. Starting with her neutral special, Chun-Li will make use of her iconic fireball that she has used in every single one of her playable appearances to date. And while it might not pack the same punch as Hadouken, it's tailored to work far better with Chun-Li's defensive playstyle, Kikoken. With this, Chun-Li will reel back and launch a fireball forward using one arm, this fireball moving slowly across the screen and dealing damage once it makes contact with an opponent. This fireball has two different firing speeds, with the weak version being performed if the player taps the B button, while the strong version will be performed if the player holds the B button, with the main differences between them being their movement speed and how long they stay on the screen. By comparison, the weaker input of Kikoken will travel a much further distance than that of the heavy version, but will do so at a much slower pace, while the stronger version of Kikoken will start up and move much faster but cover less range as a result. Both fireballs will deal the same damage on hit, so which version you use purely comes down to the situation you find yourself in, as like Kikoken's slower speed contends far better with opponents trying to zone, while strong Kikoken is much more dangerous at close to mid-range and can be a great way to stuff buttons. 
Also, if used in the air, the range of these moves will be greatly reduced to compensate for the fact that Kikoken is not normally usable in the air, much like Terry's Power Wave. While Kikoken has never been a remarkable part of Chun-Li's kit, it at least provides the player with decent mid-range pressure and a great way to check zoners trying to charge their major attacks. But the noticeable difference between versions might make it a bit hard to use at first. If only there was a way to get the best of both worlds. Enter the first of Chun-Li's EX specials, EX Kikoken. By holding back on the control stick then pushing forward and pressing either A or B, Chun-Li will put her back into launching a Kikoken projectile that covers the range of weak Kikoken but at the speed of strong Kikoken, with the projectile itself counting for two hits as opposed to one. This attack animation is designed to imitate the way Chun-Li performs Kikoken in Street Fighter 2, which is also replicated for the EX version of Kikoken in Street Fighter 5. And here in Smash, this version of the attack is mainly used to create space or close-out combos that push the opponent out of the range of your normals. Also, while there's no limit to how many times you can use this move in a row, this attack's cooldown is notably slower than the other versions of Kikoken to balance out its unique upsides. Moving on to her side special, Chun-Li will make use of another one of her iconic special moves that has been a part of every single one of her fighting game appearances, with it being useful both for offensive and defensive play. Spinning Bird Kick with this, Chun-Li will throw her momentum forward in a spinning kick that will cause her to float off the ground. This attack dealing rapid damage to foes before launching them away with the final kick. And if used in the air, it will allow Chun-Li to float as long as the move is active. Thanks to the long-lasting hitbox this move sports, this can be a great way to stop buttons and pressure opponents in the neutral. And like Kikoken, Spinning Bird Kick also sports a weak and strong variation that will slightly change around its stats. Weak SBD will push Chun-Li further, but will in turn hit less times and deal overall less shield damage, making it much better for repositioning, while strong SBD will deal more damage in exchange for covering less range, making it far more suitable for following up Chun-Li's normals. But, just like Kikoken, this isn't the only way you can perform this move. Enter the second of Chun-Li's EX specials, EX Spinning Bird Kick. Where EX Kikoken offered a unique blend of speed and power in exchange for being far more unsafe on shield, EX Spinning Bird Kick by comparison will completely alter the move's properties to create a move that's designed far less for offense and more for heavily punishing over aggression. By holding down on the control stick then flicking up and pressing either A or B, Chun-Li will perform a hard-hitting spin kick that will deal heavy damage and launch opponents much further than ever regular SBDs. But there's a catch. You see, EX Spinning Bird Kick doesn't push Chun-Li forward as she attacks, with her instead remaining in place much like the FEX Tatsu does for Ryu in the Street Fighter series. Thanks to this change, it allows for Chun-Li to lock down a specific section of the stage and greatly punish opponents trying to Oki her, with this being one of her best tools for pushing opponents out of her comfort zone. This is thanks to the fact that EX Spinning Bird Kick is fully intangible during its startup animation, making its already fast 5-frame startup completely safe and able to beat any normal button. However, should it be predicted, opponents will find that EX Spinning Bird Kick is very easy to punish should you dodge the initial startup, especially if they sport either a disjoint or a non-energy based projectile. As a result, throwing this out haphazardly can be a bane on your survivability, but if your opponent is foolish enough to hover over you when you're trying to get off the floor, by all means, show them just how much of a mistake it is to underestimate your offensive capabilities. For her recovery special, Chun-Li will make use of a special that, while not as commonplace as her other special moves, is a strong recovery tool and even more destructive stock closer if used effectively. This is Tensho Kyak. With this, Chun-Li will perform a series of rising kicks into the air, dealing rapid damage before launching opponents away after the final strike. While it might not sport the invincibility of Shoryuken, this move's incredibly fast startup speed makes it a very dangerous anti-air and an even more dangerous out of shield option. On top of that, the speed at which Chun-Li rises into the air makes it a fairly difficult move to punish outside of a physical counter, as she'll more than likely be outside of her opponent's damage range by the time they have a chance to drop their shield. But all of this is dwarfed by this move's status as Chun-Li's main special cancel option. Throughout this move set, I've discussed various attacks that sport the opportunity to either set up kills or be very dangerous in general since they can link into Chun-Li's specials. Well, their ability to cancel into this move is what makes them so dangerous. Thanks to the launch power provided by this attack, finishing off stomp combos or up-air jungles with Tenshokyok is a great way to secure kills. It is one of the main reasons why Chun-Li's vertical kill range is notably stronger than her horizontal one, despite the strength of moves like Kazanshu and her back air. However, as strong as this move is as a kill confirm, it's only fairly average as a recovery option, much like Ryu's Shoryuken. While it sports more horizontal recovery than Shoryuken, it can still be stuffed by opponents at the ledge looking to edgeguard you, either by physical attacks or projectiles. So try to recover low in order to maximize your chances of survivability. Finally, for her down special, Chun-Li will make use of the same technique used by Ryu and Ken, allowing her to greatly improve her defensive presence and make approaching her all the more dangerous. Focus Attack this move functions nearly identically to the focus attack used by Ryu and Ken, with its main difference being the animation Chun-Li performs while using the attack. With this, Chun-Li will be able to armor through jump ins and punish aggression with a variety of dangerous techniques, and since the player can FADC into lightning legs or specials, this could potentially add some versatility to her burst damage setups. 
While I can't imagine the concept of focus on Third Strike Chun-Li is terrifying, I'm reminded that that's essentially what Chun-Li is in Street Fighter VI. Damn, she's gonna be really good there too, isn't she? Next is the Final Smash, and for this, Chun-Li will take a note from Ryu and Ken's book and sport two different Final Smashes, with the one you get depending on whether you're close to your opponent or not. These are Kikosho and Hoyosen. Starting with Kikosho, this move will have Chun-Li reel back and unleash a large Kikoken blast from her hands, her body becoming engulfed in a ball of rapid-hitting energy that will deal heavy damage to all opponents in its path. This version of Kikosho is meant to reference the way it appears in the Versus series, which is much larger in scale and far more destructive, as there's no limit to how many opponents this attack can hit. Once the attack ends, Chun-Li will perform a small taunt and return to her idle animation. As for Hoyo Sen, this final smash will only trigger if you're within a set distance of an opponent, with this having Chun-Li perform a series of rapidating lightning leg comments before sending her caught opponent soaring with a powerful upwards kick. This is often regarded as one of the most terrifying supers in Third Strike, and it's one of the main reasons Chun-Li is such a dangerous character in said game. And I want this move's legacy to be emulated here in Smash through this move's ability to not only secure kills, but also work as a combo starter. You see, if the weaker, meter-based version of Hoyosen is used, the player will be able to actually jump-cancel the final hit of the attack into one of her aerials, namely her aerial target combo, much like you can in Third Strike. While it's something you'll never see in competitive play as Final Smashes are not a thing, it's still something that adds a bit of fun for those that want to bend the rules. victory theme, Chun-Li will use the same tune used by Ryu and Ken before her, which is the tune that plays when you win a match in Street Fighter 2. While she is mainly based on her Third Strike iteration, the theme for winning a match in Third Strike doesn't really have the same impact, nor do the earlier Street Fighter 3 win themes make sense for a character that wasn't in the game at the time. As a result, all the Street Fighter characters will share the same tune, and this will probably be the case if I ever cover another Street Fighter character in the future. <laughs> Victory animation number one will have Chun-Li perform a pair of kicks before composing herself and bowing to the camera, a smile adorning her face as she does so. This is a variation of one of her victory animations from Third Strike, although this design in particular is based on her victory animation from Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Victory animation number two will have Chun-Li perform her victory animation from Street Fighter V, this having her perform a series of attacks before standing on one leg and striking a confident pose. While it might lack the water brush effects of said game, it's still a cool animation and a nice contrast to the fact that Ryu uses his Street Fighter 4 victory animation. Finally, victory animation number 3 will have Chun-Li jump for joy before flashing a peace sign for the camera, all while letting out a... <laughs> this is, by far, Chun-Li's most iconic victory animation, with it being used in multiple titles and being one of the most memorable aspects of the character. While it would be forgotten by later titles in the series, it is in Third Strike, and that's all that matters here. <laughs> Tom number one will have Chun-Li lean forward, a smile adorning her face as she brings one of her arms up and holds it out in front of herself. As she does this, she will let out a smile, Gomene, or sorry, with this being her original taunt animation from Street Fighter 2. This would go on to be used in titles like Street Fighter Alpha, the Versus series, and Street Fighter 4, and if an opponent is too close to Chun-Li when she performs this taunt, they will take a small bit of damage. Taunt number two will have Chun-Li perform her taunt from Street Fighter 5, having her rest her hands on her hips as she leans forward and asks her question if they're even trying. This is the only title on record that uses this taunt, and while I'd much rather prefer her original taunt, it still works for Chun-Li as a character. Finally, taunt number three will have Chun-Li let out a loud yawn, all before performing one of three unique follow-up animations that will change each time the player uses the taunt. Chun-Li can massage her shoulder, crack her neck, or stretch and try to crack her back, with this being her taunt from Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. <laughs> For her colors, Chun-Li will make use of eight unique color options that the player can use in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, much like Ryu and Ken's color options are based on Street Fighter 2. While a lot of Chun-Li's colors have been carried over between titles, I feel that Chun-Li's options in Third Strike are the most well-rounded, and are more than enough to give her a great set of colors. Also, for those wondering, there will be no alternate costumes in this list, as this design is still focused around Third Strike Chun-Li. While there are some I'd love to include, well, I don't think I need to explain to you why they won't be included. Still nice though. Color number one is Chun-Li's standard appearance, featuring her blue and yellow Chinese dress, white boots, and her brown leggings that accentuate the muscle definition of her legs. In terms of color variation, the main aspect of Chun-Li that will change between each color option is the color of her dress, although a couple of color options will also change the colors of her boots and leggings in order to help them stand out. Color number two will change Chun-Li's dress to a striking jade green, this being the color the player gets if they input medium punch in third strike. Color number three will have Chun-Li's dress be dyed a deep purple, with this being the light kick option in Third Strike. 
Color number 4 will turn her dress a deep grey, which is the medium kick option in 3rd strike. Color number 5 is her heavy punch option in 3rd strike, with this darkening the blue in Chun-Li's dress and slightly darkening her leggings. It's a simple change, but it still looks great. Color number 6 will be the first color to change Chun-Li's colors more drastically, with this having her dress change to a blend of scarlet red and mint green while her leggings will become a wine red color. This is the start plus heavy punch option in 3rd strike, and it definitely stands out compared to the options that came before it. Color number 7 will change Chun-Li's dress to a hot pink while her leggings will also be changed to a shade of pink, with this being the start plus light kick option in 3rd strike. Finally, color number 8 will change Chun-Li's dress to a blend of white and light blue while her leggings will also be changed to a snow white. This is the start plus medium kick color option in 3rd strike, and out of all the colors Chun-Li has acquired throughout the years, this one is my personal favorite. <laughs> Finding games have always been an important part of my life, with it kickstarting my love for character design and video game design as a whole all the way back in 1999 with games like Vampire Savior and Street Fighter Alpha 3. In my time growing up around this genre, I've seen the dark age of fighting games. I've seen the rebirth of the genre with games like Street Fighter 4. I've been a direct competitor with games like Mall vs. Capcom 3 and Blaze Blue Continuum Shift. And I've been around to see games thrive for years while others either die off before they can even have a chance to get going, or are cannibalized by their fan bases from the inside out. The point is that I've been around to see the fighting game Golden Age come and go multiple times, and with the release of Street Fighter VI, another Golden Age is set to begin, and I couldn't be more excited. At the time of writing this, Combo Breaker 2023 has just come to an end, and after events such as Strive's fantastic Grand Finals, Street Fighter V and Killer Instinct's Top 8's being a fantastic time, and Vampire Savior always being a highlight of the event for me, I'm reminded of how awesome fighting games are, and how much I love this genre. And to celebrate the beginning of a new golden age, I've gone ahead and put together this moveset for Chun-Li. Chun-Li as a fighter seems like something that honestly should have already happened, and I'm very surprised that she didn't get nearly as much support as other characters going into the DLC speculation of Smash Ultimate. She's the first woman of fighting games and the most iconic female fighter in history, and anywhere Street Fighter tends to go, she always tends to be a part of the festivities. As a matter of fact, Smash is currently one of the only major crossover appearances Street Fighter has had that doesn't feature Chun-Li as a playable character, and after looking back at it a couple years after Ultimate's development has come to an end, I genuinely don't understand how it didn't happen. She was apparently considered for a playable spot at some point, but was either dropped or cut due to time constraints. And that's honestly a shame, because she definitely could have been a very fun fighter. I feel that, should Ryu come back in the next Smash, Chun-Li definitely has a high chance of being a newcomer either for the base roster or as DLC. But since we have no idea when to expect the next Smash, let alone who will be cut, I'm not going to hold my breath. For the time being, you can get your Chun-Li fix by picking up and playing Street Fighter VI, as there's never been a better time to branch off from Smash and try something new. Who knows, you might just learn something new about the genre. If you like what you saw, be sure to like and comment as doing so helps with the algorithm gives me a nice boost of morale. Also, if you want to see more, feel free to, feel free to follow the playlist in the description to watch the other moves that I put together for my Challenger Concept series, all while subscribing and pressing that little bell icon to make sure you never miss a future upload. Until the next time I see you, I've been Felicia Fan, and I hope you play fighting games.